Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. Space and time are two pretty limiting factors when it comes to trying to produce as much food as possible. And so with the help of today's sponsor, Readly, I want to share with you a bunch of permaculture inspired ideas to help you turn your garden into a multi-functional, multi-use space so you can really make the most out of the area. To help us out, let's look at the permaculture principle of integrate rather than segregate. A garden kind of specific example is a polyculture or intercropping where you're growing different plants together to serve particular benefits. And it also applies for systems. For example, your compost system, instead of seeing it as something off to the side of the garden, see it as a part of the garden because it's all of the, the nutrients are going into the compost bin and then going back out onto the garden. Essentially, it's drawing connecting lines between all of the different elements of the garden and also elements in terms of what we want from the space and to create a design that matches those connections as best as possible. A lot of it is about trying to create multifunctional spaces. A very simple example behind me is we're on the shady side of the trellis. The trellis behind me, we've got a grape that's gonna be growing over on one side and a climbing rose on the other side. And so it's not gonna be super suitable for lots of plants. So instead of what we've done is we've created a table area at hip height that we can either use as a potting bench or we can use it to do initial prep of vegetables if you wanna cook them on the fire. Just very useful to have a little bit of table space, but it's not table space is occupying prime real estate as in a very sunny corner where that's where we want to be growing the plants. Something that I love is integrating edibles with ornamentals rather than segregating them rather than having say your allotment space and then the ornamental garden. Here we've got forget-me-nots bit of a ground cover. We've got roses these are an edible ornamental and then we've got a gooseberry bush behind, which is very much on the edible side, all growing together really nicely. A very easy way of creating a productive and a beautiful space is by understanding what edible crops give you amazing flowers. So calendula is one example, the Jerusalem artichokes is another one. Out of focus in the front, a purple sprouting broccoli flowers, which look so beautiful. Here we've left five leeks in, each leek will create a single pretty large beautiful allium flower that the bumblebees love but you can also use it a little bit like chai flowers and create a nice vinegar from it. One really fun thing to do is to swap a barbecue for a campfire because a campfire creates a space that we can just sit around and enjoy and watch the flames late into the night with our friends and family versus a barbecue where you kind of like leave it and eat the food. You can still cook on the campfire, but the other nice thing is that it is very easy to move about to different parts of the garden. Not too close to a polytunnel though. Knowing that I have a campfire certainly does draw me into the garden a little bit more. I think a secret perhaps to having a successful, thriving, productive garden or allotment is to make it a space that's appealing to you. And the way that you do that is you tap into your personality. I always say that a garden is an extension to your personality. So let the way that you design and approach your garden be that kind of showcase of your personality. Because when you create a space that appeals to you more, you want to spend more time in it. When you design or tinker your garden around your personality, it's naturally going to become a multifunctional space because in a way it's, it's meeting your needs and your wants and sometimes your dreams. For me, that is obviously centered around food and food growing, but I also want to make sure I have a space to cook and I want to make sure that I have a space to sit back and relax, whether it's having lunch or doing some reading. And so I'm very excited to share with you the Reedley Corner, which earlier today was literally just some forget-me-nots, this kind of seating area, and that was about it. And so everything has been turfed off, put some nice wood chip down, planted up these two half whiskey barrels, which on this one, I've got a climbing rose that is gonna come over. On that side, I've planted a grapevine, which is gonna grow over here. And so it's gonna kind of enclose and feel really nice and green. It's just out of direct sunlight. So during summer, I can just sit and enjoy the shade. I can enjoy the fire as well. 
And then we've interplanted with all sorts of flowers to add a nice pop of color. And for a long time, I've wanted a space in the garden that I can sit back and just relax and do some reading. I'm constantly looking uh, inspiration for gardening. And this is where today's sponsor Readly comes in, hence the Readly Corner. They've made it possible. And in a nutshell, Readly is a wonderful source of information that everyone should know about because Readly gives you access to over 7,000 magazines and newspapers. Of course, you've got your gardening magazines like Grow Your Own, Garden Illustrated, Gardener's World, but virtually any hobby, whether you're into model trains or DIY or fishing or sailboats, you can access all of your favorite magazines in one place for one monthly price. But as gardeners, we like free stuff and Readly are offering two months free which can be canceled at any time, two months free, unlimited access to the Readly app. My favorite thing about this garden, well, I've got a few favorite things, but one of them is that there's no phone signal here, there's no Wi-Fi, and so it really is cut off, it really is an escape. And the nice thing about the Readly app is that I can download some of my favorite magazines and I can view them all offline. And so I can sit here, I can do some reading, I can get inspiration, one of the, articles that I was reading recently was in the Grow Your Own magazine about growing chickpeas. I, I tried them a few years ago and it was kind of semi-successful but it certainly got me inspired to try growing chickpeas again. I'm going to try them outside, I'm going to try them in a polytunnel, I'm going to sow them next week. And I love just flicking through the various gardening magazines, looking for kind of practical ideas or inspiration that I can maybe tweak and apply to this space. And that's one of the beautiful things about gardening. Every single garden is different. It has its own challenges, but also its own opportunities. And it's about unlocking those opportunities whilst staying true to your personality. One fun way that I use really is to get ideas for what to cook that's coming out of the garden. I was looking through the Good Food magazine and I saw this great kind of radish and nasturtium based recipe. I thought, oh, finally, something that's very much seasonal. Turns out it was written by Charles Dowding. You know, gardeners understand seasonality. This is my version. I swapped the country quinoa uh, for some croutons and instead of the cheese, got the eggs from the Danaronen chicken. So uh, yes, it's been a long day. It's just after nine in the evening. I am starving. Make sure you get those two free months of Readly access using my link down below. And even though this has just planted up, it's already made this corner much nicer. I cannot wait to see how this develops over the coming months and into the coming years. A small orchard can bring multiple uses or multiple benefits. So we've got five apple trees here. The idea is around this apple tree, we can keep the grass nice and short to enjoy it as a picnic space in the future, especially as it grows, it casts some shade. That'll be very welcome during summer. But then on the outer fringes, we can plant it up with maybe more of a food forest-esque style planting to also benefit the local wildlife, but to create more of a forage style food system where we can go and pick whatever's ready. Not to mention that apples are a perennial. You also get a huge variety choice to choose from. So if you're maybe focusing on self-sufficiency, you might want to grow apple trees that provide long lasting apples in storage to be able to enjoy them easily into the following new year after harvesting. Another way of creating a multifunctional space is by planting in gills. This is usually where you have a fruit tree or any other kind of tree and you plant in and around it with various different crops that are gonna benefit from the main tree. And so around the edges are gonna be strawberries because strawberries originally, you know, they're a woodland plant. And then I'm gonna put uh, comfrey in the middle to provide food uh, for, for this apple tree. Maybe dot in a little bit of wild garlic. And then maybe in the corner here, I could plant a trailing berry and then train it along the fence. There's a saying, the best fertilizer is the gardener's shadow, which really means the more time that you can spend in your space, the better it is gonna be. We work so hard to make these spaces as productive as possible. Let's think about other ways that we can make the most from the space in terms of enjoyment, in terms of for beneficial insects, like letting things flower. And so what you really wanna do is tap into your passion, your personality, but also take inspiration. For example, from magazines on Readly, don't forget to make the most of the two free months offer. 
And if you want to find out more about the permaculture principles and start to think about how you can utilize them in your garden, this video right here is going to be a really nice introduction.